Test. Test. Hi, friends. Nice to see you. It's been a while since I touched these buttons, so I'm fucking it up already. Doo-ba-doo-ba-doo-ba-doo. Walking across joins us. How's Alberta? How's Alberta today? What's going on in Alberta? Um, she better, it's cold she's and a dreary a in Ontario. I'm in I'm in Toronto. You're in Edmonton. Is it snowing there already? Is that what you said? No. Um, it's hot. Edmonton? 28 degrees today. Yesterday, oh. it got above 30. It, it was supposed oh. to be... They, they keep saying we're going to get the... Um, the winds are going to shift. Are you going to get a nor'easter? What's that? I don't know what that is. Uh, it's uh, weather stuff, I guess. Okay. I've heard it. <laughs> I've heard weather things like people say, it's a nor'easter coming to you. You're not getting a nor'easter. A Chinook, do you get Chinooks there or is that Calgary? Calgary get, is, we don't really Chinook? get Chinooks. We're not close right. enough to the mountains because what needs to happen is you need to have, the the, the weather needs to shift quickly in order to get a Chinook and, and we don't have that. Like we're four hours from North three and a half Calgary. hours from Jasper, yeah. right? And we're two hours, two and a half hours from. Did you ever hear that story about um, uh, what's his name, DiCaprio? He was filming that movie where he fought a bear. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a great movie. I can't remember the name of it. Where it was filmed in Alberta, and he went on this big oil sands. Like you got to yeah, stop yeah. digging in the oil sands. No more oil. Leave the oil yeah. on the ground. And then he took his like private jet that just uses like premium oil everywhere. Well, and he was flipping out about climate change, which I'm not yeah, yeah. suggesting isn't fake, but he was very, very upset because um one day it was like minus 10, and then the next day it was like plus 10. And he goes, There's something wrong. And everyone's like, You're it was a Chinook, welcome, you idiot. Yeah, welcome, welcome to fucking Alberta. We've asshole. been getting those for <laughs> forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> speaking of climate change, you notice too, I was 26 laughing. degrees right now. Well, nice to see you, Edmonton. I was laughing uh, yesterday because, speaking of climate change, you know those forest fires that have been happening across Canada, like the most in history because of climate change? Was That's climate eco-terrorism. Change? <laughs> How dumb, How dumb are we? Are you, do you have yeah, to yeah. be to think well, that someone's running around the bushes? Lighting Holy fires God. to save save the environment. Yeah, it, you know what? That, can I uh, listen? You're going to finish your story. In white hat. Hang on. Let me. I'm, there's no story. I just wanted to point out that the same people, and I fucking laugh every time I see it. The same yeah. accounts on Twitter, Facebook, the same people that used to be like, remember, constitutional law experts about masks. Remember that. Remember that the constitutional mask law experts? How's that? How's my volume there? Is that better? better test yeah. one, two, test, test. Thanks. Um, they pivoted to like, they pivoted to like vaccine scientists and yeah. experts in vaccinology, right? At same account. Yeah. And then they pivoted after that. They pivoted after that to like experts in like gender, gender fluidity and gender yeah, they studies. Don't, they that? don't like, yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't like, well, they, well, they're not done. The and then they pivoted and they're like community. a couple months ago. They're like, Hey, forest fires. These are man-made eco-terrorism. That's what's going on. Then they became like, they became experts in like forestry and climate yeah. change. Now they're experts yeah. in parental rights. It's amazing. I mean, these are the same counts. I just want to say, well done. I mean, there are some really well-rounded hillbillies out there. This is awesome. I love it. Grant had a rant. Um, like it was three or four days after he got back from um he, he took some time off because he just had a baby. Him and Michaela had a little baby girl. Birdie. Oh, his dad, congratulations, dude. I didn't yeah, even know yeah. that. They've got a couple of kids at home. Um did she, Pat she did he take Pat leave? There's a question I have for you. Um he One of those guys. took a uh, a couple of weeks, which I think you get anyway. Hmm. And then he came back to work. All right. I think he needs a break from because she has two from a previous marriage and now they've added a third. So, you know, I have one friend that took paternity leave, by the way. One friend. Yeah. Took paternity leave. And he's like, I'm off for like six months. Does he also have two last names? (laughs) I got to tell you, it is. I I look at paternity leave. Listen, I look at, I do. I look at paternity leave like it's a soft move. I really do. For for anybody who's going to take mad or paternity leave, mind you, because I have three kids, right? So I know what it's like to be at home when they're home, especially all three of them. I love them. They're adults. We're the best friends. They all live with me. We hang out. 
my eldest guy is my blunt roller. He's the king. He's like 23 years old. Just beautiful relationship I have with my kids. But when you're younger, right? Yeah. And someone's like, I'm going to take pad leave and I'm going to stay at home with all three of my kids plus a newborn. I'm like, I give that two months. Sure enough, my friend, Daryl, won't say his name, Spring, not his last name. That's his last name. He's like, I'm taking pat leave for six months. I go, I give it two months. Two and a half weeks later, that fucking guy was back at work. He was like, yeah, I can't do it. This is fucking we're, I, Honestly, we're not wired to. Be, and if you are, if you're a, if you're a dude yeah. and you have that, that gene or that wiring where you can stay home yeah. with the kids and the wife is you know she's the 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 one that makes makes the money or whatever or whatever the decision is behind parental leave i'm okay with it i just it, i could not do it i removed myself from parenting and it's the best decision i made we've hey. joked about this before but my no, kids i thought you were, were lying i remember you, you told me that your wife no. raised the kids and you just took a step back and you just showed up like to dance recitals you did all the physical hard labor of being a parent but any I did of the all other the conflict stuff, stuff. Like, yeah 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 you don't need to be yelled at I, yeah <laughs> exactly yeah 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 but like when i met your wife and i'm like hey, is it true you raised the kids she goes yeah he didn't do shit and i'm happy he didn't because they wouldn't have turned out this awesome and i'm like holy fuck you weren't lying you did not no. raise your children good for you smart I um, I I take credit for certain things, and you should see the eyebrows I get when I do. Oh, that was me. Yeah, he did okay, nothing. Now I got to tell you this story about because sure. Grant kind of nailed this. Oh, about so the uh, back, the expert accounts, the experts, everybody's experts, and everything now. And he actually called out somebody he went to school with, uh -huh. and in the rant, he goes, "Listen." Everybody that I know that's an expert in this now was an idiot in high school. <laughs> and he goes, you, he goes, you know how I know you were an idiot? Cause we had the same grades, Kyle, you and I will barely passed every year. And he yeah, starts yeah, yeah. ranting about it's so true. I think there's a certain, there's a certain type of personality that, that ends up that they're dumb guys yeah, and idiots, and they're yeah. not comfortable with being dumb guys. I know, but somehow so they, they got wings over the past three years. And you're like, you know what? I read this one meme. I'm a fucking give it to everybody on climate change today. And you're like, yeah, do it. That's awesome. Like I'm at that point with these people and you're right. And Grant's right. Like, listen, and I'll, I'll tell tales out of school. I don't mind. So I have a family, my extended family, not my kids, but you know, family. And I'll just say that. Just say family. <laughs> unequivocally the dumbest person dumbest people in my family are now all experts in climate change yeah. vaccinology uh every conspiracy theory is correct yeah. uh you know the the parental uh rights bullshit it is they are all they all become experts for like a three-month cycle depending on what country feeds them what load of shit that might align with their religious values or their belief system and i love it i think it's great now because i don't care right it's like Oh, it's just a fucking mark of an idiot. Like, it, I just absolutely know anybody who tells me something definitively from an account that says Bry Guy 6295 in any capacity with anything to do with health, mental health, climate change, anything to do with science. I'm like, oh, yeah. That's literally it now. Like, it's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and I can't believe people are still fighting it. Anyway, I found it fucking fascinating. And Grant's right. Every single person that is a self proclaimed expert in those fields. That tell everybody what they know is that dumb person from your family or that idiot in your school or that person that never had any friends that magically found some because a bunch of other idiots are saying the same yeah. stuff so they think we're like mutual friends it's the best i love yeah. it and, 2023 and it, is not a riot what it is now is to me it's it's disheartening and it's exhausting because oh, i've reached a point where i've I've sort of come to the conclusion that there is no hope for us and we might as well just light it all on fire. And, and the reason why I'm saying that is because you can't, nothing can happen now where there isn't some alternative reason why it's happening. Like, listen, we, I get it. No, no one's a 100%, no one 100% definitively can say how much of the, the 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 climate change situation is causing the forest fires? You, you just can't. 
Yes, yeah, scientists it, can. They, they can, but they can't say exactly how much. There is Not a percentage. Not to like the 0.1 percent, but yeah, like like yes. 80 percent, 80, 85 percent of the wildfires that we've seen in Canada have all been climate change related. Like the but, vast, but they also can't say exactly how many were man made. Like, does it you matter know what I mean? when 80? No, it doesn't it, exactly. But that's yeah. what I'm saying. It doesn't yeah. matter. Uh, and and again, because there is some gray area in that discussion, it opens the door for these crazies to move in and give yeah. it give it another explanation. And listen, I'm as skeptical as the next person, but we are not going to fix the problems that we live in. In the with the world that we live in right now, if we can't, if we have twenty five percent of the population believing that people are running around deliberately starting forest fires to further the climate change narrative, like we're fucked. Just because we're libtards, yeah. Uh, just because every Dean, dude, no, it, no, it's we're, we're no, dude. it's over. No, it's all, it's over. <laughs> like light it all on fire. I know, I, I know. I swear Listen, to God, like if you're just the loudest assholes in the room, that's what dumb people do. Dunning we need to get on display. That's all Dean, it is. We net. We need to get to a point where we, we put we them in start. cages. No, there's a better way. Okay, okay, I don't think there is, but go ahead. There is. Okay, right. that same guy thinks that the government is behind the evacuation of his home and somehow is going to steal his stuff. And won't evacuate. That's my favorite one. Leave the WEF there. thing, dude. The WEF thing attached to this makes me laugh my ass off. They're like Klaus Schwab has guys. This is the narrative that comes up with these fucking wackos. I love it. No, to me, it's entertainment. Now it's not even a problem. I'm like that's nah, not a problem. These guys are just idiots. I just accept that everybody has the same ability to reason and somewhat of a reasonable IQ like I do. Maybe not. No. Maybe that's a big assumption. But what I'm saying is, is that the narrative around the Klaus Schwab thing, where like the leader of the uh, World Economic Forum is telling, sending people into Canada to light these fires, and his whole goal, they've already fucking realized what the goal is, right? They've already like, oh yeah, this is the goal. The whole goal is to take your land away from you, saying you can't live here anymore because, you know, and then to speculate prices, and they come in and they buy up all this land that's all burnt out, that's happening in Hawaii, it's happening right now. You have literally fucking politicians in this country retweeting that stuff. And I can't stop laughing. Like, okay. it's not, I don't even take it serious anymore. Like, you, we used to see you years missed, ago, oh, this is terrible. When's the world going to, no, man. Uh, you missed is, my fix. This is the best. What's your You fix? missed my fix. Okay. What Th is it? There's people in Florida that weren't leaving that town that was going to get hit by that hurricane. Adelia? They weren't leaving because they thought there was some kind Fisting of conspiracy the behind right it. now, by the way. Oh, what, is, what do you mean? They, they said let that. Let them stay. Yeah. Let them go. Just. Totally. Good luck, way. Jerry. Hundred percent. Yeah. You know, strap and you in. Know what? And, and, <laughs> and just, just give them a good little wave. As you pull out with your truck loaded with the dog and some canned goods, because you're going to get to higher ground. Wave to Jerry. Say, dude, what? So, so take me. They, they think that. So there are people in I'm Florida. I'm not in leaving. The, I've been here for fifty years. I've been yeah, through the work. That's that different. But what is this conspiracy theory? Because this this is fucking big. Oh, there's a conspiracy thing. But there's, what is it? I don't know. There's the, conspiracy know theories about. about everything. Everything now. Every weather situation. Every fire. So some people in all... Florida and like the crazies, the QAnon fucked fuckos. They think that the they hurricane isn't real, and they're just trying to get people out of the house so they can. So like. Klaus Schwab I hate steal to their say land. this. Is that real? Maybe they'll die. <laughs> and if they die, Yay. maybe they won't have kids. Listen, it's I... called natural selection for a reason, Locke. Yes. You know yes. what I mean? We don't have to wish anything on anybody here. In fact, I won't. I'm trying not to because but... I'm trying to be a better person. <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm totally not a better person than that. We talked about this a thousand times, mm. but there's a reason why, like the whole vaccine conversation coming up anymore. Guys, girls don't care. Same thing with your conspiracy. No one cares. We want to leave you to you. We want to do whatever we want devices because we're crazy because we know something you don't is that you'll die first. <laughs> we're good. I'm good. Natural selection. It's good. Yeah. I'm a fan. We also have to get to a point, Dean, where we can start to like, and, and I said this when we were 
you know, balls deep in the middle of the conversation with, you know, the, the, the freedom fighters and the, the yeah. COVID's fake and all that. I, 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 I was frustrated Pandemic. because I thought that there should have been conversations about what was wrong, what our public officials did wrong. There is, it's, it's healthy not to trust, uh, you know, it's, it's healthy to have a certain amount of speculation about things, right? Sure. Because generally speaking, you're kind of on your own. Like we're on our own. We have to 100%. be smart about what we, um, what, what we're told. And we have to be, you have to do it. And again, I sound like a, a conspiracy theorist, but you have to do your research. I just finished watching that. Well, you hold it. Killer. You have to wait, listen to, to tell people in 2023, you have to do your research. Let me just add a quick addendum. You I have as well hang a yeah, yeah, I might as well put a have, flag on my roof right now. You might right? as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that too. But you telling people to do, yeah, you telling people to do their own research, number one, you're in the fuck Trudeau crowd for sure. So good. We got a guy on that team. That's awesome. Yeah. The second part of that is the people you're talking to who go, yeah, I need to do my own research. Have which you seen I Pain encourage Killer? people to read. Hang on. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, with Matthew Broderick, oh. it's incredible. Oh, um, my God. To do your own research, you have to be able to comprehend the research you're reading. That's a good so point. There's that, that, the issue. Yes. Yes. No, but but a healthy level of speculation and skepticism, I think, is 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 good. Absolutely. But we have to be able to have we have to be able to have these conversations. And and I for some reason I for some reason we lost the ability to do that somewhere along the line. And I think we're we're being dragged back. Um, I'm happy about that. Like I was thinking about it yesterday. Uh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. A friend of mine called. He's like, "We don't talk anymore." I'm like, it's "Cause you're kind of an idiot." Like, you know, <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> and he's like, "What do you mean?" And so I told him, "I'm like, listen, we don't share the same values. Like, uh, the pandemic was one of the greatest things in the world for me. I just it was like pruning a tree, the friendship tree, right? I was like, chop, 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 chop. Oh, chop. Oh yeah, chop, chop, chop. So now, like, yeah. when people call me, he's like, "Hey, uh, you off me?" I'm like, "Yeah, I just don't think we share the same values." You can call me crazy. I have a finite amount of time. I'm not spending a chase relationships with idiots. I'll tell you that. Anyway, what were you going to say? No, I was just going to say, I think we have to get to a point where we can start to have some conversations. We're dealing with something in Alberta right now where, and and everything is turned into some sort of um, like a, it, it's turned into some sort of battleground thing. Right. Like, and I'm frustrated by it and I'm not, I'm not a supporter of Danielle Smith, but She's trying to get the federal government to fund more hydrogen um, energy sources and 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 do a little bit more work on that regard, right? And guess what she's decided to do? She's stopped all green energy projects because she, in her mind, they're not spending enough money on 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 natural gas, right? And and clean energy. Like so you're an second. idiot. Your premier stopped all renewable energy resource investment into yeah. the province, right? Is that, that, that we're not going to do any more wind. We're not like, going to do any more solar because you sh you're not doing this. Yeah. And, yeah. Like that's what, what is in a time weird? in a time when financial institutions will lend you money at no interest to get into doing renewable resources in the, in the, in the billions, they're not l lending money for fossil fuel, anything they're lending money for renewables. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, we don't need it. And everybody's like, what the fuck are you talking about? She just decides that she doesn't want to do it because she wants to sell her friend's oil. Is that the deal? Listen, it's and the that's deal. the problem is Not that, that you take extremes on, on things like that. Both sides do. Should we be looking at natural gas as an alternative? Absolutely, we should be. We got a ton here. Does it make sense for other parts of the country? No, it makes sense in Alberta. She's not wrong. But you're not winning any wars here. By killing all of the green energy projects or slowing those down. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And that's what happens. And so I'm just, I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated with the, with how things progress because that's, that's what happens. We end up in these battle battles over ideology and she's not wrong. It, we should be exploring. If you, if you, there's ways of taking the natural gas that we have. And 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 exploring the, the 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 hydrogen energy projects, it's definitely something we should be looking at. The government, the federal government, isn't spending the money she thinks they should be spending on it. 
So she cancels all the green energy. Like, yeah, what, like what are you she's doing? She's fucking oh, insane. An idiot. Dude, she's like a fucking insane. Hand. You're an idiot. A freak. She is an idiot. Anyway, it just, it just, of- it's another highlight. It highlights the differences between, yeah. uh, you know, the, our, our division and, and the fact that we're not growing and that we should just light it all on fire. Yeah, no, that's what an idiot does. An idiot makes an emotionally destructive decision. That's what idiots do. Speaking of idiots. Positive Mike brings up nuclear power. Same thing. We should be exploring nuclear power. Like we should be right. We should be actually focusing on that. Whatever. I don't care. I don't even care if we explore more. You're with oil, me. To be honest. You're with you're with I, me I, I don't, it all on far. Yeah, yeah. I could care less. I mean, you just fucking give us cheap gas. Like, is it that hard to give Canadians cheap gas? We have so much oil underneath our fucking ground that's just sitting there. Like, is it that hard to give us cheap gas to just like we buy gas from Saudi Arabia and oil? Not that I give a shit at the moment because everybody needs oil. Like, no one gets upset or angry when their car works, right? When they have to go somewhere. Everybody's like, yeah, look at me. I'm green and I drive a test. First of all, you're a fucking idiot. It's just a fucking homemade tracking device that'll lock up on you as soon as you crash into a wall because your car can't stop because it won't. So there's that. But when you're talking about gas and oil, I'm like, I phase out. Like I, I phase out the same way I phase out when I meet a guy who's got an I love oil and gas shirt. I'm like, there's no way you love oil and gas. There's no way God. you love both those compounds. Like I could care less about those things. So when we talk about those things, y- yeah, who gives a shit? I don't really give a shit. It'd be nice if it's we not could, going like, anywhere. Harness the wind. We're still but, burning more fossil fuels. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, until we sort that out, we're, we're going to have to keep. Like I don't think there there's a danger of that stopping. But, but should we be exploring alternatives? Absolutely, we should. We should be exploring all of them, and we should be throwing money at all of and them. And transitioning into a cleaner energy. Absolutely. And getting people educated as to what that is. But this government doesn't do a great job. No government really does. It's just a fight against special interests. It's oil fighting government, government fighting oil, hippies fighting oil, money. oil fighting hippies. It's fucking money. ridiculous. Money. Anyway. We're climate people. We know about climate change. We believe in it. We understand it. Speaking of fossils, are you watching Ted Lasso, gentlemen? Are you watching this show? Jason Sudeikis soccer show? Have you seen I it? I started watching it uh-huh. about a month ago, and I finished watching the last episode last night. Yeah. And I think? absolutely love it. It's one of it's one of the it's one of the best shows I've watched in the last couple of years. Why do you like it? Lachlan. That and Snowfall was really good. Although the ending is Snowfall. Just like, haven't seen Snowfall. Started watching this show called From, which is fucking weird, by the way. From? Anyway, I want to get yeah, yeah. We'll get to it in a second. Uh Ted Lasso, what do you what do you like? My next show is gonna be Blackbird. Uh also creepy. It's a tr- based on a true story. Blackbird. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'm yeah. gonna watch that next. Um Ted Lasso yes. was unbelievable. And you said something to me before I started watching it, and I kind of laughed at you. I think it might have been on this podcast. You said that show will make you a better person. And I was like, I've watched lots of TV shows and I'm still an asshole. Mm. But I actually think that you have, there's some merit to that statement. Um, right? Because I, I, it dude, and just I said this, made I said this me feel so the good. Day. Totally. I, anytime you watch it, you're like, man, anything's possible if you're nice. Like at the end of every episode of Ted Lasso, you're like, man, that guy like, religiously tries to do the right thing all the fucking time and it works out for him no all no he got fucked time. a bit he got fucked i know quite he a got bit. fucked quite a bit but he, he the way he chose to look at it the way he chose to respond and everything how he chose to like go yeah i'm getting fucked but that's okay right or like issue after issue after issue yeah, that's okay. You know, we're going to do our best. The cliches about doing your best for people, the cliches about loving people, the way he talks about his family. And it gives me goosebumps even just to, just to talk about Ted Lasso. Never mind fucking watch it. But it legitimately is the only show of its kind where they're like, hey, let's do a TV show about doing the right thing and kindness and empathy. See how it goes. Jason Snake has hit a home run because I don't know of any other show like it. At the end of that show, every single episode of that show, there's a moment. And I don't know if he does this on purpose. And I won't give anything away. And then I want to talk about Hannah Waddington because she might be the hottest babe on the planet. Um, Yeah. There's a moment at the end of every episode of Ted Lasso where I'm like, man, I need to do more of that. 
like I need to respond like that to people in my life who give me a hard time or try to fuck me over. I need to find a better way to be because that's all Ted Lasso is just finding a better way to be a brighter way to look at the world. And dude, we do not operate like that on a daily basis. No. And I didn't Ted get Lasso's any of that from like that this. show. You didn't? I didn't. I, did. I didn't leave any episode going. <laughs> I need to be. Yeah, I know, but you're you. Dude. Not that I need to draw a line in the sand about the differences between the two of us, but yeah. there was never a moment where I was like, I I don't trust people that are too nice. But the show is unbelievable. It is so well done. And I and you know what I took away from it? What's that? Was I find it interesting when a show the the strength of the show isn't one character, right? Mm-hmm. It's it when you have a cast where everyone is a killer and everyone is just nailing their roles and it doesn't happen very often. Seinfeld, um, outside of Jerry, because I always thought Jerry was there was something a little off about Jerry's acting. I never thought he was. Oh, he's a terrible off. actor. Yeah, Jerry Seinfeld was an awful fucking actor. But Everybody that show was so good because anybody who ended up on that screen with them was amazing right like it was unbelievable and even like the newman like i mean just every just think of all the seinfeld characters when they were on that set something was happening they created an environment where everybody felt like they absolutely had to and that was ted lasso for me every character i was just like oh my god this whole the soccer players roy you know what he might roy can't might be my favorite guy in that entire show so yeah roy uh, he might be my favorite guy in the entire show. He was brilliant. Yeah. Like he's oh just my- big, soft, hard, but just like full fucking dropping C bombs every fucking second word. But yeah. gruff and an asshole. Didn't play by anybody's rules, but he really wanted to be a happy person, found a way of being a happy person. But you know who the best, the best actress on that show is? Actor, actress. It's got to be Hannah Waddington. You Rebecca like Walton. her, eh? Oh, yeah, dude. I don't know what it is. How old I have no is idea. she? I, I yeah, and I'm not asking 60. to be a dick. Did she? You think she's yeah, 60? yeah, yeah. The owner of the team, the socialite, wealthy divorcee of the former owner of the team, who, by the way, has some dalliances with a gentleman from the team. So she dates younger. Just wanted to point that out. But I think Hannah. I can't remember how she hold. Here's her with Lady Gaga. Not awful. Not awful. No, no. Is like she, actually is really she well attractive? Known? She is she well known in England because oh yeah um because I I've never met I've never heard of her before until Ted Lasso there was, she was in Game a, of Thrones was she yeah dude I believe she was if I'm not mistaken yeah 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 uh, da, 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 da. I don't she's think she's married 60. she is forty nine dude 49. she's younger than me I was oh gonna say I I she's gorgeous you know what it is and Stunning. you and I were talking about this the way she carried herself. Yeah. was so attractive, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, and I just, I was blown away by her. And you know what? Now that I'm, now that I have been, um, now I've watched this and I've been talking about it and I've been Googling it, there's stuff popping up in my feed. Like the, they're doing interviews and stuff like that. Jason Sudeikis on uh, The Tonight Show and and uh, and Juno, who is um, Keely. She's, you know, she did quite a press tour for this, for the, for Ted Lasso. And then the Emmys too, because they cleaned up at the Emmys. Um, They did a bunch of interviews. I couldn't figure out why, because the acting's not like, it's not like the acting is spectacular, right? I disagree. I disagree. Eh, I don't know if it's that great. I don't know that it's bad. No, I I think it's brilliant. I just love the lessons, like the existential shit, the philosophy that's behind that show. I think it's fucking awesome. I think the acting was phenomenal in it even the um her her um her manager like what's his name leslie yeah he was fucking brilliant oh he was great yeah the goofy he's bastard so yeah. funny he's so smiling he yeah, was yeah, so yeah. funny and the beard and his buddy the the, the with the beard his partner mm-hmm. in crime that yeah the helped assistant him coach, coach. Yeah, yeah yeah unbelievable actor unbelievable I don't, uh, I don't know that he's gonna win any like awards for it i I mean he doesn't say a lot for that show though yeah he's really good dude it's a great show i'm not disagreeing i just don't think it's like magnolia level acting that's all not that i care it's every single one of those actors and actresses in that ted lasso 
will now that will ignite their career in North America. We'll see them in a bunch of stuff moving forward. All of them. I like so I, I would like to. Um I, I'm a big fan of Hannah Waddington. She can be more stuff if you ask me. Big yeah. fan. Yeah. Just Again, it, it, out there. it was the confidence. Yeah. Like how she carried herself was just so attractive. That's the thing, That's the thing right? Like yeah. the older I get, the more it's like I am very attracted to like seriously confident women that walk into a room and fucking own it. Yeah. Like where you walk in and you're like, oh that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's confident. Confidence not, is like not, an in- not intellect. A, not a cocky conf- thing. Maybe that's why I like Hannah Waddington so much in the show as Rebecca Weldon, the owner of the team. Is she's confident. She's she's got this like she's got an intellect to her. She's got a fucking wicked sense of humor. She's got a dirty mouth. And I'm like, my God. Yeah. She's perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, back in the I day, like not so much. Yeah, I do too. Anyway, yeah. list has come out. The list, by the way, have you heard of the list? I have a feeling I know where we're going based on yeah. what you sent me, and I opened that, and I, 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 I yeah. have a lot of thoughts about this. Well, uh, you should, because it concerns all of us. Uh, every year, journal gets published in the New England Journal of Medicine and Health. Uh, and it's out early this week. It's uh, the things we got stuck in our assholes mm-hmm. over the last year, 2022. Significant. Is this um, North America or is this around the world? What is that? This is America. Just in the United States. That's a Buzz Lightyear doll in that x-ray bud right up the rectum, right up the old poop chute. There you go. To infinity and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the I list see, is, I see oh, yeah, it now. You, you can see the Buzz You Lightyear. really have to have done yeah. some work to be able to get a buzz light your thing yeah and like th- yeah. well the wings aren't involved. the wings are contracted right so it's a lot easier when the wings are pulled in i've it's seen those so toys so that's hard. not uh, here's anyway, my thing can i well, can i say can this get out to the list before you start well no go ahead well you go okay. ahead and then we'll get to the list of things by the way you're welcome things that have been found inside people's anuses yeah vaginas and penises go ahead so, so here's here's my thing. Yeah. And this is not this is not a pastime of mine. And if it was You don't hoop stuff? I no, I'm not a I, I've not never a been the no, I don't even want a finger in there. Like no. I just stay away. I I I've say no to the toothless been, cat. Yes, yes, yes. Like apparently Ted the Nugent's the into it. If you oh, watch one well, of his podcasts, there was a shocker. dildo on his on his <laughs> bookshelf. And he likes to hoop it? And, and listen, I've had conversations on my radio show uh, multiple times. When things get stuck in people's asses, we usually do. Um, we usually have a conversation about it. We legitimately, we've had nurses and doctors and people phone up. We had one guy phone up. He was, uh, he's, he was a uh, paramedic. And he said, the weirdest thing I've seen, and he's seen a lot of things, was an apple. And, um, and then one, a nurse called us up one day when we were having a discussion about a guy in England who, who has a collection of, um, like they're called rectal foreign objects. Yeah. RFAs. Yeah. yeah, There's actually an acronym for it because people put so many things in their assholes and they, but he collects, which I'll help you war stuff. Like, so bombs and shells and stuff like that from world war artillery. Yeah. 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 With the little thin end, which could go. You know, I guess one night he decided yeah. to stick one up his ass and he had to go to the hospital to have that removed. And That's this right. nurse called up and she said, the one thing you learn about that and working as a nurse in the hospital is people will put anything up there. And I was like, anything. And she's like, I am telling you right now, anything. Yeah. Wow. It um, was quite common on a regular basis for somebody to come. Here's my, this is the point I wanted to make before we get to the list. If I was into that, Uh I think I would want to have a, like a plan B, like tie a string around it or something. Oh, you mean a base? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's in my four rules for not having things stuck in your asshole. Number one is never put anything up your ass. that doesn't have a base. Like it's, super simple like if someone's like hey i'm thinking of boofing i'll be like yeah no problem judgment free zone does it have a retrieval string or a base something mm, to get one, it Dean. back out if <laughs> if there's an aggressive yeah. movement and it slips too far an down. aggressive movement well yeah like putting it up your ass 
<laughs> anyway, let's get to the fucking list because it's a great fucking list. As you know, uh, if you go to crier.co, you can see the whole list yourself. List of things <laughs> removed from people's rectums last year is intense. That's the name of the article. And it's it's happening. Like, I, I get it. People love bum play, butt stuff. Good for you. Zero judgment. 885 cases last year, an estimated 38,948 emergency room visits for rectal foreign bodies. Sorry. From the year 2012 to 2021, that's 40,000 people. Average age was 43. Almost all of them were men. We're sick fucks. Uh, 48% required hospitalization. 55% of foreign bodies were sexual devices. The annual incident presents a rectal foreign body increase from 1.2 to 1.9 persons in 2021. But what did we, oh, there's Buzz. What did we find there? Oh, and there's a squirrel. That's a terrible one. <laughs> well, I, no, no, that can't yeah, we'll just, be real. We'll just zoom right past the squirrel. Um, no. Yeah, that is real. It is. It's a real story. Yeah, it happened in Malaysia, as you can tell. A uh, 60-year-old Was uncle accidentally pet? slipped in the bathroom and said he it's uh, always an uncle. fell on a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the I, bomb guy said. <laughs> I slipped and fell and a bomb ended up my ass. Yeah, that's uh, the French guy, right? Uh, that was in France. It was a French was it artillery France or thought it was, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyway, no, they had France. to clear the whole street because it, yeah. like, it was actually a live bomb. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, it's right here. In April, Visual Journey of Emergency Surgery reported that a man had to be rushed into an emergency surgery after getting a, quote, can of deodorant stuck up his butt. Last year, a French senior citizen left Dr. Shell-shocked, huh? <laughs> When he arrived with a World War I artillery shell yes, lodged in his rectum, it caused the hospital to be partially evacuated over bomb scare concerns. <laughs> That's the one. Anyway, uh, the penis was was lightly used last year in terms of insertion. Uh, this is what this is what they found inside some penises. In some United people States are into America. pain because that that that's the only explanation yeah. for that. Because you can't car key car key. You, you cannot tell me that that is a car key. Yeah, with the serrated weird. edges. Maybe it was like a car key that hadn't quite been cut yet. I don't know. Don't judge. Wooden spoon, nail. Easy. I can do that. I wouldn't because it's a nail, but that's easy. Pencil. Pencil. I can. I can wrap my head around out that. Although that's pretty big. Like that um, hole's not that big. So, and it's got an eraser. Like I, I don't know. And it's got lead. Not a good idea. Some beads. Seven inch silicone tube. Paper clip, uh, comb teeth, <laughs> a piece of soap. S <laughs> this is a good one. Ceiling fan chain in his penis hole states that he has been there since his shower at least nine last night. Screwdriver tip, inflatable sex toy, USB cord, cell phone charger, and 14-inch cord lock. That was in the penis last year. Those are some of the more notable items. people. Right, let's get to the shower. vagina. Yeah, I've said that before. <clears throat> Vagina, coin, of course, it's called a coin purse, screw, yeah, uh, was holding a pen near her vagina when the cap dislodged and stuck inside. Okay. Yeah, remove two, the, the cap too, guys. Two pen, yeah, that's a good idea. Two pencil sharpeners, butterfly charm, drinking cup, bobby pin, golf ball, uh, this is in quotes, flashlight placed in vagina by patient at home, but had no intention of it becoming stuck. Okay. Drumstick. Wow. <laughs> Nail want... polish bottle. <laughs> Nail polish bottle, camera lens cap, unset and perfume bar, unset and soap bar, perfume soap bar, soap dispenser, Spatula. and a spatula in the video. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> now the rectum. This is going to be a bigger list. It is. It is significantly yeah, longer. Because people are way more creative with the bum. Plastic toy fish. Okay. Small bird toy. Silver. Mag Tell me to stop anytime one grabs your attention. Okay. S yeah. Silver magnet. Quote. Sent in by wife for possible 16 ounce glass bottle in rectum. Skin. <laughs> Okay. Baby, here's baby, the other baby. thing too. How do you do like, that? Like, do you go to your wife first if you get something stuck in your ass? Like this guy apparently that's had a what I'm at. glass bottle up his ass. Is you go to his wife and go, baby, 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 you you gotta help you gotta help me out here. I I might be in trouble. And she's like, what is it? He's like, well, I was sticking a 16 ounce. It's a pint glass up my asshole. 
uh, and it's it's no longer. That's there. a difficult conversation, right? Like yeah. I, I think a lot of these things are done. How do you approach that? Well, How here's the thing. Start that chat. I'm guessing like you're me. Probably... Let's say you're you. You yeah. hooped an, a pint glass, and I'm your wife. How do you do that? How do you start that conversation? Well, first off, I think there's going to be a lot of these situations where the partner might not be aware of that other of their of their partner's need to to fire something up their hoop. Right. So if they're sitting there with a with a squash racket mm-hmm. and they're getting themselves off a on a Friday racket. night, I doubt their wife's in there <laughs> in the room with them. So like doing her makeup while he's hooping a squash racket and she's there going, baby, you almost got the whole handle. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. I doubt that that's a, that's a, that's, that's not a team sport. I'm guessing. I, and I could be wrong. Right. So people I'm th- are into weird shit, dude. You I'm might be thinking wrong. that that might be a solo activity. Yeah. And if you are in the need of some assistance, like, here's the thing. If that squash racket does get stuck up there and it's not coming out, you're going to need a ride to the hospital, too. <laughs> yeah, and you're going to have to lay down in the back on your side. Like, that's the other thing. This is the thing no one ever thinks of when they hoop something and they have to go to ER. It's like, yeah. how you get You're not there? walking upright, <laughs> right? You're not getting there sitting down. You're fucked. Yeah. yeah. So Maybe like, a badminton if gonna, racket, but not if a squash shove racket. something up your ass. Do yourself a favor. Make sure you do it close to an ER. Anyway, back to the list, Locke. Uh, skincare <laughs> bottle, hair mousse can, piece of a lamp, mm. homemade toy made out of metal, cube-shaped toy, crayon, ratchet wrench, T-handle wrench. <laughs> Says it was in the shower and fell in the shower stopper, stuck up rectum. Okay. <laughs> Action figure head, action figure, because, well, where there's an action figure head, there's an action figure. Toilet brush, patient complained of rectal pain, admits to inserting sex toys six months prior. Six months. Six months. Yeah, yeah, I'm going, listen, I, I right? listen, I know that's embarrassing, but I'm pretty sure that if I got something stuck up my ass, I'd go right away. Can you imagine walking around with that for that long? With all that embarrassment and all that sepsis? No, I can't. I am 100% um, okay just going, hey, listen, can you get this out? Yeah. Like, what did you do, yeah. sir? Well, I shoved it up my ass, clearly. Like, there's, like that's the and time I, you want to I be I use my nine iron a lot. <laughs> uh, spoon. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> Vibrator egg. Patient not sure if it passed in stool. Deflated balloon, fist-sized water water balloon, vegetable peeler, I guess, crochet needle, fishing pole, patient states it has a big toy in rectum, patient says he fell on top of it. There's another one. Comb, fragrance beads, reusable ice pack, Hi, whatever. Glass beer bottle, had a few beers, paste, placed a long wax candle into his rectum, lost balance, <laughs> fell onto the couch and lost hold of the candle. Okay, <laughs> Pill Again, a string, I everyone. I know. If you're using the candle, just melt the little end and just like let it Retrieve dry. It. And, then, and then, yeah, yeah. Important. Pill container, cologne bottle, perfume bottle. Quote says girlfriend put vibrator in rectum while he was asleep. Yeah, bud. Uh, billiard ball. Patient said he was playing with a container of athlete's foot spray and accidentally ended up in his rectum. Yeah, okay. Uh, pla- plastic candy holder, piece of a broom handle. Put in butt plug and then fell asleep. Now can't find said butt plug. Stainless steel rod, ice cream cone, Monopoly piece, two poker chips because of a bet. It's a lot of things in your asshole, friends. Yeah. Like a lot of things. Well, and d- just think about the the people that were able to get it out on their own accord. <laughs> that they did a little got, bit of planning. There's a lot of people out there hooping. Yeah, think about it. Like, I guess I'm going to guess that out of 100 hoopings, one or two go wrong. So if we're talking 40,000 ER hoopings, you're talking That's a lot of people with bum. Four million people sticking their things up their ass at the same time. That's awesome. Way to go, America. You love the butt stuff. The weird well, butt stuff, too. The thing about Not it, too, I'm is joking. there are... um there's some larger items on that list. And again, like I said, like from ones? what I've been told, you need to, you don't just graduate to 
to a squash racket. I mean, you got to work your way up to it, right? Yeah, like, you might start with a ping pong ball, then you get a golf ball, then you might do a baseball, but then you might go billiard ball. Like, is yeah. that what you're saying? There's a gradual process yeah, for the things yeah, you want. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's why you butt don't plugs start with come, a T-handle wrench, right? That's why butt plugs come in different sizes, right? You need to, you need to stretch, ex- it, out. stretch <laughs> it out and ex- explore your options. You got to train your asshole. That's what yeah. you got to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. And again, it sounds like we know more about the anal game than we should just based on. I don't, I don't. I'm just, I base my anal game on being wedgied once in high school. I never want anything in that region again. Here's my question. Are you, do you eat? Do you eat a little ass? Are you a salad tosser? No, 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 no. Okay. No, no. That's where the poop is. Uh, See, I'm not, I'm not into that either. No. Oh. And and I've been judged harshly in certain crowds, in certain company. Oh, you only get you only get judged harshly by people who want to get E. coli. Like, I mean, who gives a shit? Where they're like, oh, you gotta try it. You know why they're telling you it's great? Why they're telling you that's awesome? Is because they now know that you, that they they know that you know that they do it and they want to feel less weird. So they're trying to get everybody else to try it. Listen, as I said before, no judgment. But stuff all you want. It's not for this mm. guy, but I do have advice. Number four, I'm going to go four to one. Don't put anything in your rectum with teeth. Nothing jagged. That's number three. Number two, don't lie to the surgeon ever, like ever. He knows. He knows you don't fall. It's pointless. And the number one thing, Locke, you touched on it a little earlier. This is 100% the truth. Never insert anything inside yourself that doesn't have a base or retrieval string, ever. You're welcome. Yeah. Now like we've done go good. out and stick stuff in your bum. I might try this, although I'm new to this game. I don't know if the trash panda can is going to be not where you start, people. Right? No, no, you start with like a Red Bull or like a yeah. chapstick. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. a pen. back scratcher, and you work your way up to a can. See, back, back scratcher, and then maybe you know, in a year or so. Yeah. You want to way, work your way up to that pint? Yeah, absolutely. Listen, it's not that big of a deal. Listen, Linda's on it. The reason why I know about Linda's butt like plugs Lachlan is because I've watched a lot about butt plugs. Yes, he does. I, I, I've watched enough videos to know that you need to, that this is a gradual process. People are thanking us for this information, by the way. You didn't want to talk about this list of things that people had stuck in themselves. Jen Waddell. Thank you, Dean. I, She's like, thank you. You're welcome, Jen. Happy to help you anytime. I was a little... I was a little concerned about the topic, right? Why? Don't knock until talking you about try things, chopper. That's chopper. Chopper sends a comment. He's like, "Don't knock until you try it, boys." I love. Well, I remember. I worked. I worked with a guy, and he was adamant that I was missing he's out. He's like, he's like, "Have you ever?" He says, "You don't do any of the bump," and I'm like, "No." I, I said, "I just, I don't." It's never crossed no, my no. mind to jam anything up my ass, and I, no. and I don't. I wouldn't ask my wife to stick a finger in my bum or like, I don't want to do it. Like would she, if it's just my wife. Yeah. She would probably want me to go get some medical attention, like go see somebody. Cause she'd probably be concerned about a brain tumor or something. If I went that route. And, and he was just absolutely shocked that there was somebody in his presence that hadn't inserted something in their bum for pleasure. And I was, yeah. Well, listen, here's how I look at it. And I'll, I can only talk from experience. I only share with you my experience. Take you back to my 10th grade year. I'm going to school in a dormitory in Alberta, as a matter of fact. No, this isn't a terrible story. It's a story of fear. It's a story of violence. I get picked up by a couple of guys and they take me and they hang me by my underwear on a ladder. <laughs> my underwear was so far up my asshole. I panicked, like panicked vomited and passed out. That's how much it hurt. (laughs) And I woke up with this panicky, manic pain, grabbing my asshole, trying to pull it away from me, even though it was attached to me because it hurt that bad. Ever since that one moment in the 10th grade, I'll never forget who did it too. Ever since that one moment in the 10th grade, anytime I've been in a situation where someone's like, what are you into the butt stuff? (laughs) What about a little butt stuff? I'm like, Hey, hey, uh, time out. You're going to have to tell your story from my 10th grade year. And I go into the story. Listen, no offense. I don't find that an erogenous zone. I have asshole PTSD. 
and you cannot go near that thing. That's my story. That's why I'm not into it. Plus, I'm not into it because I see I'm not into it because I know what it. comes. It, there you go. I Which, have, again, there are people who live for it, right? And it, yeah. and and much like all the other the butt stuff, the things you want to put yourself. Great, good for yourself. Have, have an awesome time. I applaud you. Great Jen. stuff. I am a vanilla Consent guy who will never important. put a triple A ba- battery in his asshole. Consent is important. <laughs> It's the most important, <laughs> most beautiful, important part of sex, by the way. Consent. <laughs> Jen nailed it. Yeah. So look at that's Chop. Why look I at asked. Chop. Chop's trying to get me to do it. Choppers is he's like, uh, not the same feeling, Dean, as being one sheet. I'm like, dude, I don't care. And you're never going to peer pressure me into it. Never. I would also worry that I would poo. Like, if, like, that I would have loose bowels at that moment and that I would get some on. I'm serious. Not that I put a lot of thought into this, but well, you clearly like I, I, you just I'm sick. a bit of a nomad when it comes to pooing. Like I, I'll, I poo two, three times a day, and it's aggressive at times, <laughs> and it's quite often loose, right? Like I don't want that flying around. <laughs> I fucking love you so much. Oh my god. You know what? I'm really happy you're looking out for your wife. That's awesome. It's quite awesome. I gotta worry loose. about the, the random fart when we're having sex too. Have you done that before? I farted, yeah. Well, we're having sex. Yeah. It's embarrassing. I'm and I've been with her for a long time. Every once in a while she'll push in the wrong spot and like I'll get a squeaker. Because sometimes I'm not prepared. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? like sometimes <laughs> it comes around when I'm not ready for it, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you can't when it does when the train comes to the station. Oh, you don't. Well, you, can't, you don't you say, don't, "Hey, don't listen, I've been holding okay. a fart for a half an hour, and I don't I was, really know if we should do this." You, I never say that. So when she says, "Hey, baby, you into a little little fun?" You don't. You don't go. Listen, I got to tell you something. I've been holding. I have one in the chamber right now that's brewing. I can't quite get to the bedroom to kick my pants off. Let me pass this fart and I'll join you. Kills the mood. I get it. You don't want to. You don't want to let anybody in on that. That's terrible. And then you're not going to get any, right? Uh, Linda Smart. brought up yoga. I will say this though. Since I've been doing yoga, I started when I was about forty-one. <sighs> I broke my tailbone when I was 40 and I uh, started casually doing yoga at 41. I've been doing it now. Um, like ever since you have way better control of oh, your, your asshole. Yes, you do. Yeah. Like I have a lot less. I used to at least I'd say twice a year, shit my pants. I haven't shit my pants in a couple of years now. And I think Congratulations. that's cool. Yeah. Oh, great. Thank you for telling me. This yeah. has been enlightening. <laughs> like the last half hour has been about farts and poops and things we get stuck in our assholes. Strangely enough, I feel like I'm home. I can leave the academia behind now safely. Anything intelligent? Yeah. Never happening on this show again. Not yeah. interested. Zero Not interested. interest. I've had more fun talking about things that we got stuck inside ourselves and whether or not Lachlan's into ass play than I have ever had on a podcast. Whoo! Thanks for doing this. Ah, that was a good one. Yeah, it was great to see you. A lot of we laughs should, today. We should try to make this a regular thing. Wednesday? I know we talk about that. You want to try to do Wednesdays for a bit until you get back into a regular I'm back. routine? I'm back. We're doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got Moss okay. Crop at 11 o'clock on Friday. We got to do a special podcast about dumb shit. And then you and I are doing one at 3 o'clock, unless you're out getting hammered. Are you out no, getting hammered Friday. on the weekend? Hold on. It's Friday, a non-hammered day. Are you Friday? I blackout Friday? can't. My daughter's coming, and I got to go get her. Um, oh, she's yeah, you want to do a Vancouver. podcast, and all of a sudden you want to go see your daughter. That's good. No, she's coming here. You know what that is? That is indifference. I just feel indifference from you at this point. Not even sexy indifference. Usually it's pretty cool when you're like, yeah, I'm good. I don't need it. It's all uh, good. I, uh, I, 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 do, I do miss my kids, and, um, and so well, I- Now I, you I, miss I, your kids. Now you miss your kids. 
That's I do, listen, my lack of parenting has nothing to do with whether or not I loved them. Now you love your kids. Oh, that's rich. It's, I will say this, and any parent who tells you that they are sad about their kids leaving is lying to you. It's been glorious since they've been gone. It's amazing. When they yeah, leave. You just proved everything I said right. I know, right? Same when thing. they we leave. We talked about it at the start. That's why there's like, you know, that, like the, the parental rights thing that's going around. We, we mentioned it earlier, like parents that are like, I want to have the right to homeschool my kid and teach him whatever the fuck I want. That whole movement that's going around came out of the States. A bunch of Christian weirdos are like, we don't want to send our kids to school where Jesus isn't prayed to every day. So now it's turning into this parental rights thing. And I started thinking about it today because everybody's like parental and they're all fucking idiots. They're stupid. They don't know what you're talking about. Parents should be allowed to teach your kids anything they want. And that kid should never be allowed to go and tell their teacher anything that happens in the home. Well, then you get a chance to like freely abuse your child. You stupid fucking idiot. Anyway, that's a whole other thing. But when people are like, I want to homes because it's basically you can you can't really homeschool your kids. And can you you like child welfare? Come and make sure that you're teaching your kids in Canada, all that other stuff. Those people that want to do the parental thing where they're like, I want my kids around 24 seven. I'm like, you fucking idiots. You serious right now? (laughs) Parental rights over the state. I'm like, no, no, it's that's because we can't give you that because there are some bad parents out there and the state needs to intervene when children are being harmed. doesn't matter. I should be allowed to do what I want. That's my property. They're like, "Eh, you're an idiot. And then they're like, plus I won't, don't want my children to be out of my This is an American thing, right? Oh yeah, but it's already, it's come up to Canada. Like Polly, was talking about on the weekend, a bunch of fucking religious assholes are talking about on the weekend, politicians and stuff like that. And so, yeah, it is an American thing. Michael Ferris, Christian lawyer was the guy that started this movement back in 1986. A fucking lunatic. Anyway, long story short, that's the one thing I never understood by that homeschool crowd. It's like, really? Like, the second my kids got on the school bus, the second they got home, I was like, yes. yes it's a break. You're it, gone. I can do what I want. It's not a bad thing to get a break from your kids. And it's no. a good thing for your kids to actually have a break from you. If all your kids know is if all their social interactions are with kids and are with family, parents, and that kind of thing, I'm sorry, they're not going to end up right, right? You, it, it, they're going to have they're going to have issues. And there's enough things out there to screw your kids up without you teaching them at home. I'm sorry. I will. You will never convince me that homeschooling is a good idea. to save your emails, honestly. Yeah, it is agreed. just. It is so not something that i believe in no and i mean and i i believe this well they're not teachers like they're not teachers they're they're human beings trying to teach kids with no teaching degree like i'm just going to teach you myself i'm like are you fucking serious are there bad teachers out there absolutely i also truly believe this you want to you i kept my kids out of schools with religion like I actively pursued schools that did not have religion in them. And it was the one, it was one of the few parenting moves that I had. And my wife was okay with it. I'm like, my kids will not go to a school where they're saying the Lord's prayer in the morning. It will not happen. I am not Smart. subjecting my kids to that. It's Smart. And there was actually a letter that came out because the, the, the public school system in the town we lived in, the smaller community in Saint in in Edmonton, Saint Albert, the Catholic school is the public school. So I'm like, I guess they're not going to public school because that's not happening. My kids are not. I'm not subjecting them to that. It's not happening. But I think more people need to do this kind of stuff. Yeah, totally agree. We put them um, in. We put them in in French immersion, and they were on. Um, they were on the like in another. It was another. It wasn't private school, but it was another track that wasn't the catholic it wasn't the public system and about a year in a year and a half in a letter came out that said you know we were thinking about introducing some religion to the school blah 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 and i was going to go down to the school and i was going to pull my kids out of that school and Why, they because ended- uh, religion is a plague is the the plague known to every man on this planet man and woman is that why this is my belief Oh, it's this mine is too. my belief. And I made lots of mistakes the right as a one. parent. No, it's the I right made belief. Lots, uh, lots of mistakes as a parent. And I'm not, no one's going to call me up and give me an award for father of the year. That's never happening. 
Um, but I'm telling you right now, um, that's one move that I will, and I will, and when my, when my kids have kids, we will have conversations about the lack of, um, religion in their lives, in oh, my yeah. grandkids' lives. <clears throat> I, and you I, should. You should put your hand at you. Should, you should say, "Hey, listen. You anybody that introduces that. religion to my children get doesn't get any inheritance, none." And do not come to my fucking front door and tell me with a pamphlet how to live my life. You are going to get an earful from me. I had one of those. Uh, I also have a drinking day. problem, and he's a little angry. He's a little angry. Lachlan Cross, 957 Cruise FM in Edmonton. Uh, find him on Twitter, at Lachlan Cross. Give him, or, or X, whatever the fuck you call Twitter now. I don't even care. Um, and give him a listen every single weekday morning, 957cruisefm.ca. His uh, morning show is outstanding. Dean was on my on show today. today. Yeah, talking Ted Lasso. We talked Ted Lasso twice today. It was a lot of fun. Um, loved the show today. Loved what you did to Jimmy, putting his naked picture behind you in the studio, too. Thought that was brilliant. Well done. Well done. That's content. It's a little game we're playing. He can't get there. Because the bus doesn't get him before we do our pre-show post, so we put we're putting weird pictures of him behind us, which we have multiples. Oh, I know. We'll be able to go the full year. Yeah, that's right. Um. Anyway, uh, go and listen to his morning show nine five seven cruisefm.ca. That is Lachlan Cross. Thanks for doing this, brother. We'll talk to you next week, Monday. I should be able to go Monday. We're coming back. Monday is a holiday, though. Remember that Labor Day. We're not doing it Monday. We're doing it Tuesday. Okay, then Tuesday. We'll be back Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday. I, I'm I'm missing Friday because of my I, I I'm gonna go. I got to go get my daughter. She, she flies in at three. Oh, from, that's right. Because uh, you love her now. Yeah, I forgot. I do, always love my kids. My lack of parenting had nothing to do with my love for them. Okay, appreciate you. I'll talk to you soon. Lachlan Cross, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, folks, for being here today. We appreciate it. Uh, as always, brought to you by our friends at Cantork. Go to cantork.com for more information on how you can get your hands on a hydraulic loosening and fastening torque wrench. Yeah, they make them. They make them for every application, heavy machinery, railroad, nuclear, steel industry, forestry industry. doesn't matter what you need a torque wrench for. If you can't find a loosening or fastening solution or some type of bolting solution with an industrial torque wrench, these guys make them for industries around the world, located in Edmonton, Alberta. Go to cantorque.com. See my friend Colin for more information. And, of course, we're brought to you by Gitch, Canada's luxury branded boxer briefs, pouch in the front, super soft, very breathable. You can do any of these things. You can do anything. You can do pole vault. You can sit. You can do triple jump. You can, you can lay down. You can run as fast as you can. These are the best underwear you'll ever buy. Not only are they soft, barely their fabric, but you can do anything, and they're made for all levels of performance. Trust me, I wear them every day. You can get them too. Pouched underwear, Gitch. Go to edsfineimports.com. Order them today. G-I-T-C-H-3. That is your promo code. Have a wonderful day. Oh, by the way, you get a free pair when you use the promo code when you check out. You're welcome. Uh, have a great day, everybody. Appreciate you being here. Uh, don't forget, uh, you can get everything we do at crier.co. Again, Crier Media is located at crier.co. Have a wonderful day. See you Friday with David Mosscroft. Bye, friends.